So let's say you have a project that you're working on. And at some point, you have to make a decision between whether or not you use hot rolled steel or cold rolled steel. Does it matter? Is there any real difference between the two? Well, go ahead and keep watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. I'll go through this and a few other engineering questions. And we'll be back in a second to discuss what's the difference between hot rolled and cold rolled steel. Okay, so what is the difference between hot rolling and cold rolling? So let's just start out with the general definition of rolling processes in general. Because hot rolling and cold rolling do have some things in common, a lot in common as a matter of fact. So our definition is this, the, the process of reducing the thickness or changing the cross-sectional area of a workpiece by compressive forces. Now that's what they both have in common. So they both involve the use of rollers they roll a, a piece of metal through between those rollers using high compressive forces and on the other side you end up with a reshaped part of a different thickness and a different cross-sectional area. Now that's what they have in common but there are a lot of differences between hot rolling and cold rolling. The first is, is hot rolling as the name implies takes place at elevated temperatures. So we talked about this in another video and you can go check it out and see where I talked about forging. This takes place at above the recrystallization stage. Cold rolling, on the other hand, takes place at room temperature. Also, along with cold rolling, is it does have to go through a hot rolling process to get to this point before it goes through that cold rolling process. So there are more to cold rolling than just taking a piece of metal and rolling it out. So let's talk about both of those two processes. So, so for hot rolling, you have a, a metal that goes through the recrystallization phase. So you heat the metal up and you end up on the left side here where you've got crystals. So these crystals have a name, they're called dendrites. And as metal starts to cool and solidify, the crystals start to reform and they form into grains you see here on, on the right. And when metal actually is been recrystallized it doesn't actually form into nice neat little crystals as you can see the crystals are in uh, pretty much disarray they're different sizes there's gaps there's uh, no, no real alignment so they're real randomly oriented so again so you got these dendrites in these grains so what they do is they heat the metal up above the recrystallization point so you actually are going back to dendrites where you're actually going to be able to reform these into grains and what you have is this whole roll, hot rolling taking place at these elevated temperatures. So you're above recrystallization and what you do is you actually start to reform the grain. So they're going through those rollers at the high compressive forces and you end up with smaller more aligned grains which makes the material stronger, uh, much more harder and much you know change the metal property so that they are much more useful to you in your design efforts. So this is what the crystals start to look like. So you can see you've got a lot more alignment in your crystals than you do before the process. So here you have an after uh, hot rolling process and up here is before the hot rolling process. So much more alignment, uh, and, uh, much tougher material and much harder material, much stronger material than an unrolled, unrefined grain. So what is cold rolling? Cold rolling is done at room temperature, so you have a material that's actually been hot rolled. So its grains have already gone through some alignment process. Now it's going through further processing, where it's actually getting uh, rolled further with you know high compressive forces. So we have the same rolling process that we looked at before, only now it's going through progressively rolling processes. So it's not just going through one, it actually needs to go through several because of the state that the material is in. So it's below the, the recrystal, recrystallization phase. So here is the preformed, already rolled, hot rolled steel realigned grains going through this process. And now something unique is happening. So since this has happened at room temperature, since the metal has already been formed once, we're going to look at something called a stress steering diagram. Now I went through this in one of my strength of materials videos. I'll put up a card or, or a link for you to see that. But this is a stress steering diagram. So on the x-axis we have the amount of 
strain and on the y-axis the stress that you're putting the material through. Now as the material goes through this stage, this is called Young's modulus, or the, the proportional, you know, the proportional limit on the material. This is where the material, as you start to put it under stress, it actually goes through a proportional amount of strain and it can always recover when it's in this stage. All right, once it gets to this yield stress, something unique happens. It actually starts to get to a point where it can no longer reform or no longer go back to its original shape. Now, when it's in this state, it's known as strain hardening, and you can actually form the material or shape the material or stress harden the material or work harden it, all these different terms. And they all mean one thing, that the more stress you put under this material, the harder and the tougher it'll become. And the material will keep getting harder until it reaches this ultimate strength, which is known as the ultimate tensile strength of the material. At that point, it's as strong and as hard as the material ever is going to be. It'll never recover back to its original shape, but it is actually stronger and able to deal with a lot more stresses at this point. After this, it's actually going to a phase called necking and it's prone to fracture. So in this stage, which is where cold rolling takes place, so this is the area we know as cold rolling. So that's cold rolling, and that's where this is all taking place, right here in this green hatch mark portion. Now, some of the benefits of it is it's actually you know stronger than hot rolling. It's more precision than hot rolling. It's actually got a better surface finish than hot rolling processes. It's also about twice as expensive, and it does need to be annealed later to control the hardness. And you also get much better precision. So those are some of the difference between hot rolling and cold rolling. So just to summarize things up. So hot rolling, you have wider tolerances. So it's 10 thousandths. It actually has a lower strength than cold rolling and it's less expensive than cold rolling. Cold rolling only has tighter tolerances. So about twice as tight, so 5 thousandths. High strength and high hardness. It does require more processing and it is a, a more expensive process. So if that video was helpful to you at all, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do videos on manufacturing as well as different engineering topics. Please share the video to anyone you think might be able to benefit from it. So you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter where I go through a lot of different uh, engineering and manufacturing topics up to date. I'm talking about the skills gap and in industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution. You can also follow me on Google Plus I have two fairly active communities. One is uh, Manufacturing Skills and Education, where I talk about, obviously, manufacturing and manufacturing skills, manufacturing technology, and I try to help people showcase their companies on that channel. And then there's the Engineer's Reference, where I talk about general engineering activity, uh, a lot on automation, a lot on just like new technologies and different types of you know, math applications and different things that engineering goes through. So another pretty active community. And you know, anytime you see my little logo, the infinity, double infinity, you can know that I've gotten my presence there. Uh, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.